So great to see you today. If you would stand up on your feet and not on your hands. <laughs> That's so good to be together in the house of the Lord this morning. It's so good to see you and that we're here together this week as we're getting ready to go out to celebrate Thanksgiving with our families or maybe we're staying here. I know it might be a stressful time for a lot of us, but it's so good to be together with the people of the Lord. Amen. Let's worship together today and sing to him and and just recenter our, our lives today on who he is and what he's done for us. Amen. This is who we are in Christ. Let's sing this out together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his comes from Psalms 107. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Has the Lord redeemed you? Then speak out. Tell others that he has redeemed you. He has gathered the exiles from many lands, from the east and the west, from north and south. Some wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died, but then they cried in their trouble, Lord, help and he rescued them from their distress. He led them straight to safety, to a city where they could live. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things that he has done for them. For he satisfies the thirsty and he fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest gloom. Anybody ever been there? In prison from iron chains of misery. They rebelled against the words of God, scour scorning the counsel of the Most High. They fell, and no one was there to help him. But then they cried in their trouble, Lord, help, and he saved them from their distress. He led them from that darkness and deepest glooms, gloom. He snapped their chains off. So let them praise the Lord for his great love, for the wonderful things he has done for them. 
Amen. And then it says this. Let them praise the Lord for his great love, for the wonderful things he has done. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and sing joyfully about his glorious acts. Would you pray with me this morning as we just continue to worship God? You are a faithful and good God. Lord, we just reflect on your goodness. We look to you, our most high, and we give you thanks this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. Thank you for your goodness displayed on the cross. 
As you lived and you died, and then you rose again so we could have a place with you. Just help us to be in that attitude of thankfulness today as we continue to sing. celebrate in the upcoming days this season of thankfulness. God, there's so many things to be thankful for. But we pause this morning and thank you that you are our rock and our end. You have broken the chains that bind us, the chains of death, and through salvation we have been made right with you, Heavenly Father. 
So we worship you. We praise you. We lift our voices. We lift our eyes to you. And we give you all the praise this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. And it's good to see you out. Man, what a great day to be in the house of the Lord. And, and you are going to be blessed today. We have uh, with us a special guest, a missionary to uh, Zambia, Joseph and Sherry Hayden. And Joseph is going to come in just a moment and uh, share with us. And, and then at the end of the service, we're going to have a time to uh, vote for our new student pastor. But uh, if you're visiting with us, if you're a guest, uh, and this is your first time, or maybe the first time in a long time, I want to tell you that we are so glad that you are here in the back of the pews, our card, or you can go online, uh, you can scan the code, or even go to uh, tbctrinity.org and find out more about us. We would love to meet you afterwards, and I'm just thankful for what God has done and what God is doing in our church all Glory to him. Well, I want to introduce Joseph. I'm going to ask Joseph to come on up. Uh, a couple of years ago, when one of our members, uh, Macklin, uh, I call him Mac, uh, it took me a while to realize that his first name was Jonathan. I just picked up calling him Mac. And uh, we have a great relationship. God did a work in his heart, uh, moving him uh, in the direction of starting uh, just several things that God worked in his life. And and uh, we have been able to share and partner with him in Zambia. And he went over and met Joseph. And he said, man, I met this dude that you've got to meet. And he said, his name is Joseph Hayden. And I said, well, I grew up with Joseph. And the great thing about Joseph and I is that God has redeemed us. Amen. And we will not share any of our past uh, <laughs> with anyone. No, uh, he has uh, done a great work in Joseph's life. He's done a great work in my life. We grew up together. Joseph was in my father's church when it was Molten Heights back in Decatur. But God is using him in Zambia. And one of the things we want to put before you, even moving into 2024, is more people who are giving their life away and ask how God would allow us to be part of that. And so uh, I asked Joseph to come. He was back in the States and share what God is doing, share what's on his heart this morning. Uh, and I know that you will be attentive. Would you welcome Joseph Hayden to Trinity Baptist Church? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and Jamin is not joking. We had a pretty checkered past. So uh, thank God. That gives hope to everyone else here. If God can use us, God can use anybody. Amen. Uh, before I get started, I want to ask my wife just to stand briefly. Uh, she is the better two-thirds of our, our marriage, and so uh, if you have a time after the service, we'd love for you to meet her. We've got a table uh, set up right outside these doors. On that table, we've got a little booklet uh, that we would love for you to put down your email address, and we will send you newsletters each month, just keeping you up to date on what God is doing, uh, because we need your prayers, amen? And uh, so also on that uh, table, there's some prayer cards. You can grab one of those, put it in, in the house wherever it's the most convenient for you. Uh, wherever you're going to be a captive audience, or whether that's some of us come to the refrigerator a lot, as you can tell. Uh, some people spend a lot of time uh, doing their makeup at the uh, at the mirror in the bathroom. Wherever wherever is the best place for you, though, put that up and just ask God to remind you to pray for us as we work there in Zambia, Africa. Um, as Brother Jamin said, uh, you know, God, this is a small world for God. Amen. Um, I grew up in Decatur, Alabama. Was there 47 years, but God. Uh, brought Jonathan Macklin all the way over to Zambia, 8,000 miles away, to introduce us. And so we met there. At that time, we were going through a little bit of a trial of faith, and uh, uh, God had uh, allowed us to get kicked out of our house. We were looking for a place to live. We found a place to rent that had no electricity. Uh, somebody had stolen the power cable that uh, went to the transformer, and uh, the, the landlord said that we could rent the place, but we had to replace that cable. And so um, Jonathan overheard that conversation. He contacted the church here, and your church stepped in and helped us to be able to buy that power cable for the house. And that seems like maybe a small thing to you, but uh, that, that was a year and a couple of months ago. 
And so we've been living in that house now for a year and a couple of months, rent free. And God allowed us, he, he provided a place for us to stay at exactly the right moment. And Trinity Baptist was a very big part of that. Um, TBC has been a real blessing to me. Uh, I was telling Jamin this morning, the last, uh, the last memory I have in this room was when we celebrated my dad's life. He passed away in 2015 and we had his funeral here. And uh, so it was a little strange coming in here this morning uh, just because that was the last time I had been in this room. Uh, but just some great memories there of his life. Um, he served in Zambia, Africa for nine years after he retired. And then God allowed us to step into that same ministry after he passed away. So um, I don't have the slides back here. So Sherry will get on to me for looking back. But, but I'm going to look back and I'll explain what we're seeing. Okay, so I just want to introduce you guys a little bit to what God's doing in Zambia, who we are. Um, thank you for coming alongside of us, praying for us. Uh, we thank God for the, the relationships we've already built here at Trinity Baptist and thank, thankful for those that we will be building. Uh, we arrived uh, February 2020. Uh, we, of course, lived in Alabama for all of our lives. I worked at uh, Monsanto Chemical Company for 29 years. Sherry worked as a teacher for 15 years, and we served in our local church in the deaf ministry for 25 years. So uh, if you would go ahead and go to the next page. Um, so this is our family. This is our daughter in the middle, uh, Anna Hayden. Our grand dog, as my wife would say, uh, Indy. And our son on the right-hand side and daughter-in-law uh, beside him. And uh, just about seven, month, uh, seven weeks ago, we found out that she's expecting. So we're going to be grandparents for the first time. So that's, that's a prayer request, right? We're going to be 8,000 miles away from our grandchild. So that's, that's a little bit tough. All right, go ahead and go to the next one. This is our Zambian team, our Zambian family. Uh, three of these guys on the left, uh, they live with us, actually, and God has blessed us with this great team. They're the ones that are doing the work that we're going to talk about. Uh, right now, while we're here, they're getting everything done. They've already had uh, church this morning, been out to villages and worshiped, and, and God's doing great things through them. Uh, just uh, They are on the back of our prayer card. If you could take one of those and pray for them, that God would just continue to bless and use their lives, we would really appreciate that. All right, next slide. Uh, so our... You know, what we're doing is what every one of us ought to be doing. We're, we're joining God in his mission. Okay, it's not our mission, it's God's mission. Evangelize, disciple, and plant churches, right? And the process that we used to do that is we'll go into the villages and we'll do a Jesus film. And most of the people there have never seen a TV. They've never seen uh, a video, right? And so when they see the screen come up and the, the video start, they all come out, they want to see what it's about, and, and it's... A film based on Luke chapter, or the whole book of Luke, actually, the life of Jesus. And once that's finished, we give a gospel presentation. Uh, Zambia is probably 90 plus percent religious, but probably less than 5 percent born again. And so they're very religious people, but they don't, they've never heard the gospel. And so at the end of that film, we share the gospel, and we'll have several will get saved. But immediately, we don't believe you just go evangelize and you leave somebody. We believe you're responsible to raise them up to full maturity in Christ. And so we start uh, basic Bible building blocks classes or Bible studies in the villages. And that's the second stage is we establish them in the faith. That's about a 14-week a Bible study that we go through with them. At the end of that Bible study, we give them their own personal copy of the Word of God. Most of them have never had that before. Uh, and then those that show themselves faithful through that Bible study process... We then engage them in personal discipleship. We invest more time in them, help them to grow spiritually, and that's, that's our edify stage. And then those who, who have a desire and want to, to serve in the local church in some capacity, we have a Bible institute, or if they just want to grow in their knowledge, uh, we engage them in that Bible institute, and that's our equipping stage. That's what you see on the left-hand side. And then finally, uh, the engage stage. And that's where we have trained them, and then we turn them over to do the work of the ministry. And that's, I believe that's the process that God has laid out for us, his word that we're supposed to accomplish, right? Uh, next slide. So the southern province is where we're working. These red dots represent uh, church planters that we inherited when we went. They were already there. They were already doing a work. Um, there's one that's not on the slide. He's up in the eastern province. The one on the far left is the western province, and the majority are in the southern province. <clears throat> and they represent uh, roughly about 100 churches. And so we, we assist them with finances, we assist them with training, uh, resources, and things of that nature. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. 
uh, God began to work on our heart very early uh, that he wanted us to personally be involved in the church planting, not just the oversight. And so he moved us to this area in the middle called Colomo, and we started uh, doing Bible studies in the villages there. We got permission to go into three different chiefdoms, um, and so we started doing Bible studies. Those Bible studies there, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's a couple more that have started since we arrived here. Uh, those are going on today. Those are active Bible studies. Go ahead and go to the next slide. These five represent Bible studies that have now developed into churches. So in the last three years, God has blessed and God has allowed us to establish five churches. And so we're very grateful for that. God's doing some great things. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. And right there in the middle where you see that cross, God has given us a piece of land where we're building a, a mission home and we're building a training center so that we can train these uh, leaders up so that they can leave these churches in these villages. So we just praise God for that. All right, next slide, please. Uh, this is something that you guys, when you guys bring a team, not if you guys bring a team, but when you guys bring a team, this is something you can be involved in. Uh, youth conferences, we have one of those in, in each village every year. Uh, that's a tremendous opportunity to reach the future. I know here in, at the end of the service, you're voting on a youth pastor. And uh, that's exciting time. That's exciting stuff, right? The, the youth and the children, that's the future. And if you're not investing in them, then you're not going to win the country. And so uh, that's, that's uh, one example of a village where uh, we've met under this. This is a tree that is growing out of a termite mound, if you can imagine that. And it's a great place for us to, to just have a, a service there. And so many of these uh, youth made decisions at that time. But we'd love for you to come and be involved in that, especially the young people. We'd love for you to come and, and share your faith with the young people there. Next slide, please. Another way you can get involved. How many of you guys have ever been involved in a VBS before? Okay, so many people already qualified, right? Um, the children there, most of them have never seen a VBS. They don't know what it is. And so this was one example. We had a team come and we did several VBSs. Many children received Christ and it was a great time to strengthen their faith and, and their understanding of the gospel. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is something you guys have been involved in to some degree. Uh, I don't know, how many of you guys have seen the Blue Barrels before? Okay, so we call this Barrels of Blessings. Sometimes we call it Barrels of Bridges. Okay, what is it? Well, basically, it's, it's a way we have of shipping goods over there that we use for ministry purposes. If you notice in the middle, that's rice and beans. Uh, on the top right, those are backpacks, and they have uh, female sanitary, uh, washable sanitary products. They have underwear and pencils and calculators and things of that nature in those backpacks that the ladies take and they go to a village, they meet with these young ladies, they give them these backpacks, but then that's a bridge to the gospel. They share the gospel with them out of this group. I think there were 13 saved, is that correct? And then uh, from that, they had other people start inquiring about what was going on. And that little group there that got saved, there's a, a Bible study of women now that's going on that uh, about 60 different women come to that Bible study every week. So, um, so what do beans and so these ki children down here in the in the bottom right hand corner? So how how did that ministry start? So it's a little Bible study for children. Well, somebody put uh, Jolly Ranchers and candy in one of those barrels, and so every day you know we'd go to our place and kids would run and open the gate for us, and so we'd give them some candy. Well, they got to, to used to hearing our vehicle coming down the road, so the, when they heard it, they would just run out to the road, sweeties, sweeties, and so we would hand them candy, you know, just building goodwill, and then finally, one of the guys that works with us said, hey, uh, we're not going to do this anymore, you can't come running up to the vehicles, it's too dangerous, but if you'll come to a Bible study, we're going to start one here at this time and over here at this time, if you'll come to that, we'll give you a sweetie, if you, if you are interactive and you answer questions, you might get more sweeties. And so this Bible study was began by that. So what do, what do uh, beans and rice and backpacks and candy in common? Well, they're all bridges to the gospel, right? And uh, I know Mac, Mac and them and you guys have sent some clothes. That's the same, same principle. We use those things to help with their physical need, their felt need. But then we deal with them and help them to understand their greater need for the Lord Jesus Christ and a relationship with him. All right, next slide, please. Uh, this, again, is our Zambian team. So if you notice, one of the guys there is with a girl. Um, that's his sweetheart, so he's hoping to get married next year. He's trying to raise his money, his bride price. They do dowries over there. <laughs> and so 
Uh, one, one of our burdens is on that property that, that God has given us is to build each one of these guys a small house so that they have a place to have their family. And so this is a project that we just started building these small houses. They, they cost about 7,000 US dollars each. And so that's something you can pray with us about. Uh, we would definitely, so three of those guys right now live with us, but we have no desire for them to live with us once they're married. So we want them a place to go and, and have their family. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide, please. This is an example of, of some of the church plants. Um, if I put them all on there, they'd be so small you wouldn't be able to see them. But uh, this, the one, well, both of these now, the one on the right has doubled in size, has reproduced another church, and has reproduced two other Bible studies. Um, the one on the left now has about 60 people coming to it. And so God's really blessing. Uh, so this is where they meet. It's a little different than here, right? I don't know if you can see the little logs that they're sitting on. or The air conditioning works pretty good uh, as long as it's in the cool season, but in the, in the hot season, not so good. Uh, but uh, we have tarps on the, on the roof to keep the rain out. We're in the process of trying to help them build some buildings. Uh, but, but many of them, again, for the third year, they'll go through the rainy season with, with this type of building. So they're, they're out there either under trees or under tarps trying to worship. And so just pray for them. I mean, they're, they're, they're not like Baptists, right? Uh, they don't stay home when it starts raining. Uh, they go out there and they worship. So it's, it's a wonderful privilege to serve there. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this is, if you take a picture of this, this is a, just a few of the uh, prayer requests that we have. As I mentioned, if you'll sign up for our newsletter, we include prayer requests in each one of our newsletters. You can get those that way as well. Um, and this is just some ways you can pray about partnering with us, pray about uh, uh, God stepping in and intervening in the ministry. And just go to the last slide, if you would, please. Next slide, please. Is there one more? There's not another slide. Okay, all right, so you can cut it off then. There's supposed to be one other slide, but that's good. All right, uh, so... Anyway, that's, that's a little bit about us. Uh, we'll be outside after the service. If you have any questions for us, we'd love to talk more about that with us. I know we're on a, a time schedule this morning, and I'm trying to see uh, what time it is. So uh, one of the things a lot of people ask us is, you know, why in the world would you leave America to go some, somewhere else? And my question to you this morning would be, why would you not? I mean, Jesus left heaven to come to save you right he left heaven to come save me so why would we not consider that uh, and, and as followers of Christ you know we need to look at his life and what he did and why he did it and, and we need to follow that example uh, and one thing that uh, when I shared in Sunday school this morning a little bit when God began to deal with us about leaving our jobs leaving our retirement accounts leaving our insurance it, it was a challenge right I mean it, it goes against the American dream uh, but what God wants for your life is much more important than the American dream and uh, God uh, was so gracious you know I, I have a wonderful wife she's a little bit stubborn sometimes though any any guys here have stubborn wives don't raise your hand you're in trouble now <laughs> so no, seriously, uh, when I told her that God had made it very clear to us that he wanted us to change our address, not just to take trips, she was okay, you know. She didn't give her normal answer, we need to pray about that, which really meant that's not going to happen. Uh, what she said was, okay, and uh, she began to, to plead with God, God, if this is truly from you, show me. And God did that. He took us into his word separately, confirmed it to her, confirmed it to me, then we came back together. And uh, at that point, we were able to step out on faith and do what he wanted us to do. But this morning, I want us to just briefly, we don't have a lot of time, so it's just going to be short, but briefly look at a passage of Scripture that he used in both of our lives to bring us to the point of where we're at today. So if you've got your Bible, you turn with me to Luke chapter 5. And uh, we're just going to uh, we'll read through a few verses and then look at a few things that, uh, that Jesus wants us to see there in those verses. And uh, the title of the message, if I, if I were given it a title, is Reaching the World Together. Okay, that's, that's a key, right? We all know that God wants us to reach the world, but most of us think that belongs to somebody else. That's somebody else's responsibility. Uh, but we want to see this morning, Reaching the World Together. So if you're there with me in uh, 
Luke chapter 5, just a quick background. Jesus uh, had entered his public ministry. The Father had declared, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. He had gone through the wilderness. He had been tempted uh, of the devil. And each, at each temptation, he had defeated the devil through the Word of God. And uh, in the process of, of his ministry, he had gone through Capernaum. He had gone through his home city of Nazareth. And he was traveling down to Galilee and he had cast out devils and healed people. And as you can imagine, there was a great deal of stir. There was a lot of fame that was surrounding Jesus at that time. Um, and, and I wish to God that in America that we would go out and tell our communities and our neighbors what God is doing in our life. And, and we would make him famous, right? He, he was famous at this point. And so when we find that fame had created a little bit of a problem. In uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass... That as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Now, that would be a problem that any pastor would love to have. Uh, he's got a crowd of people that are pressing upon him. For what reason? They want to hear the word of God. They have a hunger for the word of God. Uh, God knows our greatest need. God knows the greatest need of the world. And immediately, if we were asked, we'd probably say the need is Jesus. And that's not a wrong answer, but that's not the full answer, okay? The world's greatest need is the Word of God, okay? And that first came in the person of Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God, right? Uh, but, but God has given us His Word. He has preserved His Word in the printed form right here, okay? And He has also given us His Word through the preachers. So God has given us His Word because He knows that's our greatest need. How did you ever come to know about God? How did you ever realize that you were a sinner in need of a Savior? How did you ever realize that God wanted a relationship? Well, all of that is the result of this book, the Word of God. Amen? Without this book, you would never even know that God wanted a relationship with you. And so here we find Jesus with an opportunity to present God's Word to a group of people that were hungry. They were ready to hear the Word of God, but there was a problem uh, and, and they were pressing upon him, and there was not room for him to, to, to be able to step back and speak to them. And so what does he do? He begins looking around, right? He's looking for something. And what he sees, in verse 2 we'll see, uh, it says, And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. So he's looking for something that he can use to be able to communicate the word of God to these people, and he sees these two ships. Now what is a ship? Well, a ship is a vessel that is used to go out and to bring in multitudes of fishes. A ship is a vessel, a vessel that is used to go out and take uh, uh, valuable goods from one place to another or valuable uh, people to, to one person to another person. Okay, it's, it's taken over the sea. Okay, so it's a vessel that's used to, to move things from where they are to where they need to be. And, and what I want us to see here is God has painted a beautiful picture here in Luke chapter 5, 1 through 11 for us. Okay, uh, not only is a ship a vessel, but God's word very clearly shows us that our bodies are a vessel. In 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, it says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor, right? And then in uh, 2 Timothy 2.20, it says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. So God has given you a vessel that God wants you to choose to make available to him. Now, we know that God wants to use our abilities, right? Do you know that this morning? The abilities that you have, God wants to use them. Do you know what the greatest ability that you have is? Anybody know? Availability. God wants you to make yourself available. Just like Jesus looks around, he sees these vessels, these ships, and what he does is he steps into this ship. He's needing to communicate his word to the people. He gets into this vessel, and he goes out a little bit from the land, and he begins to, to preach his word, right? God wants to take your vessel. He wants to come into your vessel through salvation, and then he wants to use your vessel to proclaim his word to the people that need to hear it. And so that's a beautiful picture there. Uh, Jesus is also not just looking for availability, though. He's looking for obedience. As we see here in verse uh, 3, it says, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. So he's not only looking for availability, 
He's not only looking for us to allow him to come in, he's looking for an opportunity to use us. He's looking for obedience. He says, thrust out a little. Well, what does that look like for you and I? What does it mean a little? Well, what that could mean is volunteer for keeping the nursery, volunteer for taking up the offering, volunteer for for serving in the coffee ministry, volunteer to be a greeter, thrust out a little. When you thrust out a little, it only requires a little bit of effort, a little bit of faith, right? And that's where God starts with us. He, He wants to test us to see if we're willing to obey him. And if we obey him, then he'll take it the next step further. But first, he says, thrust out a little. Now, you know, we don't, God doesn't come in and say, I want you to give a million dollars to to missions first. What does God do first? I want you to tithe. He wants obedience. He wants to see that you're willing to trust him enough to obey. And then when you trust him enough to obey, then he'll take it the step further. But God wants to use you. He wants to use me to communicate his word to our neighbors. Thrust out a little. Thrusting out a little means talking to that guy that's sitting next to you at school about the Lord. It means walking across the street and sharing Jesus Christ with your neighbor. Those are things that you don't have to leave the comforts of your community, right? You don't have to go very far. You don't have to sacrifice very much. They're things that any, any of us can do. And God wants you to start there. And I don't know where you're at in your life this morning. Maybe you're not saved. If you're not saved, the first thing you need to do is say, Jesus, I want you to come into my vessel, and I want you to take control of my vessel. And and he'll save you and give you a purpose in life. And if you are saved, the second thing he wants you to do is he wants you to let him communicate his word through your life in every area and aspect of your life. Make yourself available. Be obedient. I'm trying to see the clock, Jamie. I'm I'm trying to get there. (laughs) So, um, So obedience and availability, right? Make yourself available. Jesus wants to get his word to the people. Nextly, I want us to see what he says in verse uh, 4. He had finished talking to the people, and he turns his attention to, to Peter. He says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Well, that's a little different, right? Now, so I'm sure with the first question, Peter probably protested a little bit. He'd been out fishing all night right and Jesus said well I want you to get in thrust out a little well I'm going to miss breakfast I was going to go home and have some breakfast well now though he's saying thrust out launch out into the deep it's a much bigger sacrifice he's not going to just miss breakfast and lunch and probably dinner he's going to get home way later than he expected Uh, he's he's left his comfort zone he's left his normal schedule to minister right And, and he's confronted with an opportunity Jesus says launch out into the deep and cast down your nets Now, here's the problem. That didn't make sense to Peter. Peter was a professional fisherman, right? Uh, Peter said, well, the time to fish is at night. The place to fish is not out in the deep. And I've already been out there all night. I've toiled all night. I've worked all night. And what happened? You know the story, right? We've caught nothing. It makes no sense for us to go out there. But the key is what he says here. In verse 5, Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. That's faith. You see, Jesus is looking for somebody who's willing to step out on faith. Jesus is looking for you to be willing to step out on faith. What does that look like? Well, oftentimes that looks like something that makes no sense to us, right? Right? When Sherry and I, when God started dealing with us about leaving to go to Africa, it made absolutely no sense to us and many people around us, right? Because, you know, we're 29 years into a career, 15 years into a career. Uh, We're just a few years away from retirement. We're just a few years away from being grandparents. And he said, I want you to move. And we're like, God, that really just doesn't make sense. And and we had our own little conversation with him about all that. And then, then we said, nevertheless... At thy word, I will. And God used this passage and other passages to confirm to us what he wanted us to do. And we didn't step out on our feelings. We stepped out on faith. We stepped out on the word of God. And any time you step out on the word of God, you're going to be fine. God's going to take care of you. doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. We're going to see that in the next verse. Uh, Verse 6, it says, And when they had done this, 
what happened? They enclosed a great multitude, amen? The, the miraculous happened. They had caught nothing all night, and then all of a sudden, their nets are filled with a great multitude, but their net break. Ah, that's a problem, right? Can you imagine being out there as a fisherman, and you've thrown it in, and you're pulling it in, and all these, a great multitude of fish are in there, and all of a sudden, your net's breaking. Well, what happens if your net breaks? You lose all the fish, right? All the work's for nothing, okay? And we're going to see what that, what that tells us here in a minute, but we see what happens next in verse 7. And this part, God is looking for us to work together to accomplish his mission. Uh, the next verse says, And they beckoned unto their partners, Hey, James and John, come help us! Right? They needed help. They're about to lose all these fish. And so they're getting James and John, they're asking them to come out, and they say, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. That's a bunch of fish, amen? Now, when Peter saw this, of course, he, he responds in the right way. He realizes, I'm just a wretched sinner. What has just happened here today is a miracle of God, and there's no way I could do this. And he sees himself for who he is, and he sees God for who he is. And then he goes on here in verse, verse uh, 9, it says, And he was astonished, and all those that were with him at the drought of the fishes that were all taken. They were all astonished. So when we do what God says he wants us to do, when we make ourselves available, when we obey him, when we surrender our vessel to him, and we step out on faith, what happens, the result of that is he's glorified. He's lifted up, amen, because we couldn't do it. Peter, James, and John didn't come in to the shore and say, look what we did, look at all these fish we got. No, they said, God did this. I'm just a sinful man. I, I, there's nothing I could do. We toiled all night and caught nothing. He says here in verse 9 that they were all astonished. But verse 10 is the key. Verse 10 says, And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now what do we learn from that? What we learn from that is this whole story, this whole, this whole experience that Jesus was taking Peter through had nothing to do with fish. It had everything to do with men. Jesus was teaching Peter a lesson. He was teaching him to trust him. He was teaching him to make himself available. He was teaching him to step out on faith. And he was teaching him that if you will do that, then I'll bring results that are greater than you could ever imagine. What if, what if Peter hadn't called for his partners to come? All those would be lost. The great multitude would be lost. What if James and John said, no, we're tired. We're not going to come help you. We're not going to partner with you. All the multitudes would be lost. You see, God's put us in a, in a very wonderful and unique situation. We're in, a, we're in a place where people are like these people in verse 1. They're hungry for the word. They want to hear the word. We're getting to preach the word and teach the word to them, and they're eating it up, and they're loving it. People are getting saved, but you know what? Sometimes the nets start breaking. The resources to, to minister to them are not adequate enough. And what do we need to do so that we don't lose those multitudes? Hey, we need some partners. And that's why we've been here for four months now. We're here trying to get people to come alongside us like James and John and join us in the mission that God has called us to do, to bring in the great multitudes, not a fish, the great multitude of souls that are potential worshipers of God. Amen? And so the question this morning, have you made your vessel, vessel available to him? Are you willing to obey him in the small things? If not, then do that this morning. If you're not saved, get saved. If, if you are saved, surrender your vessel that he has bought. Surrender it to him. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Make yourself available. Make yourself obedient. If you have made yourself obedient, now maybe it's time that you start listening for him to say, hey, 
I want you to launch out into the deep and do something a little bigger. I want you to trust me. I want you to go on that mission trip. I want you to surrender to preach. I want you to surrender to teach. I want you to do this or whatever it is God's called you to do. I'm not here to call you. God's the one that calls us, right? God's the one that asks us and puts us in service where he wants us. But I guarantee you, he doesn't want you just to come here and, and warm a pew. He doesn't call anybody to do that. You don't find that in the scriptures. Every, every place you find, God is calling us up to serve, to grow up, to maturity, to reproduce believers and followers and worship, worshipers of Christ. Amen? And so that's the question for you this morning. Where is it that you are at in this process? This is a process for every believer. He wants us all to be engaged in doing something for him that will bring honor and glory to his name. Will you partner with us? You see, it's a two-way partnership. That's what a partnership is, right? I'm sure you guys have heard on multiple occasions Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, and, and, be, and ye shall be witnesses unto him, right? And ye shall be witnesses unto him where? Both in Jerusalem and Samaria and Judea and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Think about that for just a second. It's not a either or. It's a both and. Anybody here got the gift of teleportation? I don't. Okay. How can I be ministering in Trinity, Alabama and in Zambia, Africa at the same time? The only way is through partnerships. You see, if we join together in a partnership, we represent you and the Lord Jesus Christ in Zambia, Africa and you represent this is our uttermost right our, our jerusalem is zambia your jerusalem is trinity but you represent us here we represent you that's what missions is all about that's what acts 1 8 is all about it's about joining together as the body of christ to reach great multitudes for his honor and glory amen let's pray father god we thank you for the opportunity to share here this morning God, we just pray that you would continue to bless this church. Lord, we thank you for what they're doing for you. Lord, we thank you for the, the vision that they have for the world. God, we just ask you to continue to expand and grow that vision. Lord, we thank you for, uh, for their investment in the young people of this church. And Lord, what you're about to do with that. And Lord, we just pray for your blessings on that. We pray that they would, um, that they would begin to, to grow in ways that they have not even imagined. And Lord, we pray that you'd give them a burden for your heartbeat, Lord, we know that, uh, that the existence of the church is for the mission. Lord, we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And Joseph, I'm going to ask you if you'll just stay at the front row. And Sherry, will you come up uh, to be with him? And, and we're going to respond at a, just a, a song that Nathan's going to lead us. But uh, I just want you to think this morning, just two, two things jumped off. Joseph shared, a little or a lot? I mean, is God calling you to a little or is he calling you to a lot? But he's calling us all to do something. I was thinking about what God did, the work that he did over 40-something years here to prepare them to go. Uh, and he left something that, you know, when he sat there and said, I left retirement, I left all of that. God may be working in some of you to pray about going. He might be working on some of you about giving. But whether it's a little or a lot, it's not about what we do. It's what God will do through us. And uh, I believe that God is at work. You can look at our entire world. And uh, I believe that he is calling men and women to him not just for salvation, but also to serve to the, to the uttermost parts of the world. And the key is just saying yes to Jesus. Just say yes. What is it, God? I will do it. Maybe it's a greeting. Maybe it's uh, writing a card. I was able to talk with a dear saint this morning and as part of our Trinity family and becoming a part of our uh, church family and and she just said, you know, I can't do what I used to do, but I can do what I can do. 
And that's what God asks. And so as we respond, maybe you want to come and, and lay your yes at the altar. Maybe you want to come and say, God, I will do a little or I'll do a lot, but I recommit my life to you to go, to pray, to give, to serve, whatever it looks like. Because eternity is real. This life is passing away. And only what we do for Jesus Christ matters. So what would he have you to do with your life today? As we respond, if you need to pray, we are here. We'll pray with you. Uh, but let's respond to what God is doing. Father, we tell you that we love you. And God, once again... I know that you have called me here. But God, if you call somewhere else, I'll go. If you want me to go overseas, God, I will go and I will serve you. Because I understand the great weight of being away from family and friends. But God, when you call us, you give us the grace, you give us the faith. You give us the power to operate. But God, I also ask that you would give me those things even as I stay here and minister. And not just as a pastor, but those who live across the street. Those I encounter in the town, in the cities that I shop and that I do business with. God, I pray that you would help me to be faithful in a little and faithful in a lot. And not just look and hear a missionary and say, wow, that's great. But that you would do a work in our heart, what you are calling us to do right here, right now. Stir us. Stir up a heart for those who are lost and are dying without Christ. God, help me to pray Help me to give more of my time, of my talents, of the resources you have blessed me, that your kingdom may be furthered. We simply say yes this morning. In your name we pray. You gave your life for mine, nailed to the cross, you crucified, oh my sin and shame was washed by your mercy, you are the treasure I find, my reason for living, so let my life become an offering to the one who is worthy and all praise to the Lord most high all praise to the one who saved my life all praise to Jesus Christ my King of heaven my King forever You storm the gates of my heart, the veil in between are torn apart. Now you hold the keys to the grave, cause you bring things to life. You roll stones away, and all praise to the Lord most high. All praise to the one who saved my life. All praise to Jesus Christ, High King of heaven, my King forever. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down. My whole life down for you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down. My whole life now is for you. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down. My whole life down for you. I lift.
It's my hands I'm laying my whole life down My whole life now is for you And all praise to the Lord Most High All praise to the one who saved my life All praise to Jesus Christ High King of Heaven 